Hello and welcome to another edition of Small Cap Power Discussions. I'm your host, Jim Gordon, and joining me today is CEO of BioHarvest Sciences, Elan Sobel. Welcome, Elan. Jim, it's a pleasure to be with you again. Yeah, I should say welcome back. We talked to you uh, late in 2020. Great to have you here again. Uh, lots to talk about, uh, some exciting news. You've had a very busy 2021 and a very busy month of February. But uh, as we always like to do when we're talking to a guest, let's get a little background on you first for some of our viewers who may have missed your last discussion here with Small Cap. Uh, I've always enjoyed talking to you because you've had such a diverse background. You've worked all over the world with companies all over the world as well. Give us a little brief background on you and your history before you made your way to BioHarvest. Sure, Jim. I'll try and be as brief as possible because okay. I think we've got some much more uh, interesting things to talk about. But I, I like to say that I started my working career on the back of a truck, actually working for Pepsi Cola in Boston, USA, uh, working as a helper on a truck as part of a summer internship uh, when I went to college in the US uh, as part of a, a year abroad. Um, that that opened my eyes eyes up to the world of food and beverage and fast moving consumer goods. And uh, when I finished my studies, I started an 18 year career with a Coca-Cola company um, where I literally was uh, had the pleasure of, uh, of um, experience across multiple roles in uh, customer marketing, brand marketing. Most of my time were, was in general management roles uh, in the last in the last 10 years across um, spent 12 years in Asia, three years in Africa um, and four years in the US running one of their major businesses. Uh, before we move on, one of the things I, I have always found fascinating about people like yourself that, that work at finely tuned machines like Coca-Cola is the stuff, the lessons you've learned, the, the things, the experience you take from that as you move to somewhere else. One of the things I read about you is you said one of the major things I learned is the ability to execute. Uh, talk a little bit about that before we get into some of the news you guys got have, have coming. So you bet, you know, just like everything in life, you take lessons from great companies you work with and, and great uh, managers that you have the pleasure of learning from. One of the, the key areas for me that Coke's very maniacally focused on is you have a strategy, you lock your strategy, and then you just go out and execute. And, and you, you, you don't keep on rethinking your strategy. You need to feel, you know, build your strategy based on facts, based on consumer insights, based on ensuring that you have a sustainable competitive advantage as you go to market, you build your go-to-market strategy, and then it's all about executing. And that's in, in the 18 years, that's what Coke taught me how to do, to make sure that I was you know, focused and executing all the time against the strategy. Last time you were here late in 2020, we were talking about Vinia. Uh, you've got some big news in this. Uh, as I mentioned, in early February, um, you signed an agreement with uh, Zuckerman and Company Life Sciences to explore uh, the use of Vinia as uh, therapy in type 2 diabetes. Uh, that's a big, big Big breakthrough. Also, you've got a major launch coming in April. Let's uh, get some updates on Vinia, and then we'll move on to some other news you've got this year so far as well. Sure, Jim. The Vinia journey the last uh, seven months has been, uh, for me, very inspiring. Um, it uh, it started off with the uh, launch, e-commerce launch of Vinia in in Little Israel, and it, you know, in a country with a population of uh, eight million people. We deployed uh, a full e-commerce marketing mix, and we were met with uh, fantastic success. Um, in our first month in November, we delivered more than $100,000 in revenue, and the, the momentum has continued. Um, it really blew us away, the, the consumer reception to the product. And I think when you step back and you dimensionalize it, it, it makes a lot of sense, just given the fact um, of the benefits that Vinia has. Uh, in the context of a world that we're living in, where consumers today are more concerned about their health and wellness than ever. They're looking for the, the right dietary supplements that have you know, the highest quality, that have the pedigree as it relates to clinical trials are concerned. And as you're, you're probably aware, we have done a, a number of clinical trials, which allows us to make specific structure function claims around the benefits of Vinya as it relates to the benefits of supporting heart health, the benefits related to increasing blood flow and oxygen levels, as well as the benefits related to uh, improving one's physical energy and mental alertness. So, you know, given the mindset that everyone, you know, in the world has been living in in the last 12 months and, the, you know, the, the, the challenges we've all been through, there's tremendous tailwinds around the business and we saw the impact in Israel. Um, following that launch in Israel, we've had continued momentum we actually, um, in um, early January, took up our numbers. Uh, we announced to the street an increase, significant increase in our numbers for 2021 as far as revenue is concerned for Vinia in Israel. And we are now 
heavily, heavily focused on the major prize, which is the US of A. Um, I'm pleased to say we, we have all the right, um, the right resources required in order for the, the business to support it and to build the demand behind a very unique proposition that we have where we believe in the marketplace we have inimitable, sustainable competitive advantage because we will be launching the only dietary supplement in the marketplace that has Pisces resveratrol from red grape skin. And that's uniquely as a result of our biofarming technology where we're the only company in the world that can actually produce at an industrial and commercial scale the uniquely advantage Pisces resveratrol versus the rest of the market, which is polygonum, which is a Japanese weed. Our resveratrol has much higher levels of one, solubility, which is the ability of the actual critical ingredient, in this case, Pisces resveratrol, combined with the matrix of polyphenols we have in vinea being absorbed into your intestinal tract, which is the most critical element of a dietary supplement. <clears throat> we have literally an 88% absorption rate, um, which is superior to competition. We have fantastic bioavailability as a result of that absorption with vinea entering into the bloodstream after 20 minutes. We have a peak after one hour, a second peak after five hours, and we have long lasting effect for 12 hours. Again, very unique and superior in the actual competitive landscape. And as a result of that, we have the unique efficacy that we can talk about from a benefits perspective to our consumers in those areas of supporting heart health, supporting physical and mental energy. So it's a, it's a big focus plan as far as the US is concerned. And then given the benefits of Vinia, and you mentioned the, the press release related to uh, Sukuman and company Life Sciences, we did a clinical demonstrated amongst consumers who had mild type 2 diabetes, the ability of Vinia to significantly reduce hemoglobin 1AC levels. And as a result of this clinical, we've realized the ability of taking Vinia further up the revenue curve into an area we, where we can actually continue to increase human utility value, to benefit consumers even further, and to actually look at partnerships with pharmaceutical companies today that are challenged with dealing with a, a extremely uh, grow, massive, growing challenge of type 2 diabetes in markets like the US, in you know, major markets like India and China, and in the Middle East, where you have growing rates of type 2 diabetes. And these pharma companies are looking for what they call an adjuvant therapy, which is basically a booster that will be added to an existing medication in order to improve the overall, in the case of type 2 diabetes, it's all about reducing the hemoglobin 1AC level and increasing the insulin sensitivity. So you can see with, with Vinia um, as a platform, we're able to get significant leverage as it relates to its, its, its focus being a dietary supplement, as well as moving up the curve um, in the area of, uh, of pharma. And then we've also had some really big wins uh, in our B2B side of the business, uh, where we've been successful and we announced uh, at the end of December, we announced that uh, we had received a major first B2B order with a company called Designs for Health, which is probably the preeminent uh, nutraceutical company that goes directly to professionals like doctors and nutritionists. And they have upgraded their resveratrol across a number of their products to Vinia, given the benefits of the product. We're talking with uh, Ilan Sabel. He's the CEO of BioHarvest Sciences. More information and updates on what they're doing, you can go to bioharvest.com. Uh, Ilan, as I mentioned, yeah, very busy month and year for you guys. Let's go from that and Vinia to some other exciting news. Uh, we're going to talk cannabis now. You had a major breakthrough in the growth of cannabis, uh, trichomes across the multi multiple strains in liquid media. Uh, let's talk about this. You guys, as I said, I was looking through your, your press releases and online and a whole bunch of announcements in February. Uh, let's talk about this first. And uh, can you explain why this is such a big step going forward? So, Jim, this really is a historical moment in uh, cannabis history. And uh, what we've, the grand scale of what we've achieved with this announcement, and I'll go through it in a little bit of detail, as I, I kind of say, it's like the complexity of what we've overcome. It's like climbing Mount Everest and back six times. Um, basically, we've been able to now demonstrate the ability of growing, I call it the holy trichomes, because the trichomes are such a critical component of the, of the, in the case of a plant, the cannabis plant, and even with our plant cell growth process, 
we have to grow the trichomes with the cells because those trichomes are literally the natural factories that are producing the cannabinoids, the terpenes, and the flavonoids. And we've been able to demonstrate now the ability of growing trichomes across multiple strains of cannabis. And more importantly, we've been able to, able to demonstrate the capability to consistently optimize the performance of the trichomes, which basically we're able to optimize the manufacturing capability of those engines that are producing the cannabinoids, the flavonoids, and the terpenes. And this, uh, this for us is groundbreaking because it's, it forms the foundation to have <clears throat> the, the production, cost-effective production of consistent cannabis uh, from a full spectrum perspective. So it, it, it's game changing in the industry and it's a further step for us to be able to demonstrate uh, the ability to execute, remember execute on our strategy, which is bringing a level of cannabis to the market that the market has never seen before. Um, can you talk a bit more about uh, commercializing cannabis products? I mean, for investors out there that are watching, can you talk a bit about what they should be looking for, milestones, what should they be tracking over the next year to two years? Yeah, sure, no problems. So I, I like to think about, when you think about execution, I like to think about executing in like buckets, all right? So we have three major buckets uh, as it relates to the, the cannabis roadmap and, roadmap and commercialization. Uh, the first bucket is commercial, big major commercialization steps which is similar to what we've announced um, last week with the ability to actually optimize the growth of the trichome. And we will continue over the next, you know, I would say two to four months announcing, you know, game changing commercialization steps, which give our investor base and the market and our customers out there, because there are many, many customers out there that are waiting for our grade of cannabis to hit the market to give them the, the confidence that we're moving through the process. So you'll start to see those milestones being communicated in the marketplace as we we really what we're doing here jim we're writing the bible on cannabis this is what we're doing um because as you, you you may know we're the only company out there that is able to grow trichomes in liquid media and obviously now the only company out there that's able to optimize the growth of the trichomes so this is the first bucket it's all about commercialization steps um, the second bucket will obviously be in the context of manufacturing we have a major milestone as we start to optimize the resources within our company. Today, we have a two-ton facility um, which is producing vinea. That two-ton facility in the third quarter is going to move into our new 20-plus ton superfruit nutraceuticals facility, which I'm happy to say is coming along extremely well. Uh, every, actually, every Thursday, today being Thursday, every Thursday morning, I have spent a couple of hours with the manufacturing team seeing the progress, and I'm very, very happy with the progress that the team is making. So in third quarter, the intention is to have that facility up and running, producing vinea, and then we will transition our two-ton facility <clears throat> into a cannabis-producing facility. So that's a, another major milestone in manufacturing. It, also, in the context of manufacturing, you'll start to hear from us over time um, in the near future to talk about setting up a facility in Massachusetts. We are focused, and we've mentioned this publicly, that in Boston, we want to set up a, a small-scale initial R&D facility that moves up into a commercial facility. And then the last bucket will be around our product lineup, where you'll start to hear more news from us, you know, I would say later in third quarter, fourth quarter, uh, related to how we are actually going to be leveraging the power of this unique grade of cannabis as it relates to the critical routes to market being pharma being medicinal cannabis but also in the context of the consumer goods world um for i kind of want to wrap up things in terms of what questions we've got for you um with sustainability and framework uh, last time we talked you, you uh, brought a bit of this up but i'd like to talk about some of the uh, major international agencies um how does sustainability fit into the bioharvest corporate identity that's getting more and more important as the years go by so sustainability like is in our dna it's in our core it's something that's part of our purpose if you think about our purpose our purpose is all about growing human utility value i.e bringing the goodness of our products to improve the health and wellness of our consumers but doing that in a way that looks after the world so that we can all ensure that we're leaving the world to our children and grandchildren in a much better situation to what it is today. 
sustainability is 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 a value that people have to live, they have to breathe, uh, has to be in their actions. Um, we're very very fortunate that our biofarming technology in itself has amazing sustainability credentials. So just to give you a, a couple of dimensions um, in the context of, of Vinia, one of our proprietary bioreactors is able to produce um, the equivalent amount of Pisces resveratrol that you would need 471 acres of land. Uh, or if you're in the hectare space, about 191 hectares. And that's one bioreactor that you could put in your TV room, probably in your apartment at home. Just giving you a scale of the, of the uniqueness of our technology from a sustainability perspective. So in that context, it's a major impact as far as the use of land. It's a major impact as far as carbon footprint is concerned, as far as water and energy utilization. And in the context of cannabis, and we're busy working through this from a validation perspective, we believe that our, our, <clears throat> the critical elements from a, from a sustainability framework perspective, i.e. carbon footprint, water, water and energy utilization, we will be at 5% of what you would ex you know, expect from traditional cannabis growth um, is concerned. So again, for us, it's important because we wanna make sure we, we, we're doing this with a very clear framework, which has continuous improvement objectives. So we're getting better and better. And also, at the end of the day, this is important to our investors. Um, per, per, you know, literally, the, the, the investor in the street, it's critical. It's an important value now that uh, I think as a result of what we've all been through uh, the last 12, 18 months, people are thinking differently about the world um, in many respects. It's very important for institutions. You have major institutions out there today that will not invest in companies that don't have a serious purposeful commitment to sustainability. And really, that's the way the world should be. So the whole world is moving in that direction. And we want to lead that space from a biotech company perspective. And that's what this announcement is all about. We're bringing the two best companies, a, 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 the best out of Europe, the best out of the US, pulling them together in, as part of a dream team. And we're going to be working with that combined dream team to build out our sustainability st strategy and overall um, um, ESG reporting framework. That's some exciting news, uh, Elan, and a great to, way to wrap up. Um, always great to talk to you. It's uh, Elan Sobel. He's the CEO of BioHarvest Sciences. Elan, we've got to let people know, though, a uh, live webinar coming in March. Uh, you can sign up in the description here during this uh, video. Uh, also should mention more information, bioharvest.com. Uh, we should also mention to check out smallcappower.com. You can also uh, like and view our videos on YouTube. Uh, Elan Sobel, thank you, sir, for joining us on Small Cap Power Discussion. Pleasure. And thank you for watching. I'm Jim Gordon. We'll see you next time.